Hey everyone, thanks for stopping by and checking out my channel. This is a video that I did uh, where I made a stocking hanger for a client. Uh, I do a little bit of commission work. This is a, a person who has gotten a couple of wooden flags for me and so she wanted the stocking hanger made uh, for the holidays this year. And so uh, I made this mostly out of three quarter inch uh, birch plywood. That's what the main thing is made of. And then I wrapped it in some um, pine that I ripped down to size for a little frame. And so I ripped it all down to size and then used my torch to give it a little bit of character. This brings out the grain and uh, makes the finished product look a little bit nicer. And as you can tell by the uh, title of this video, I am going to do this stencil on here by hand. I'm not going to use a Cricut or any sort of uh, vinyl cutter to do that. And every time I uh, make a project like this, I tell myself that I'm going to go ahead and get a Cricut next time. And then uh, several months goes by and I don't do a project like this. And then um, I never end up buying one. And so I need to just finally bite the bullet. But for some reason, I'm having trouble doing that. And so this is a template that I printed off. It is um, basically just made on uh, PowerPoint and I blew it up to size. Um, I pulled these snowflakes off of Google Image. I worked with the customer on exactly what she wanted it to look at, uh, look like. Um, and so then I used frog tape and laid that down uh, under the template. And you can see I had some holes there in the template and then I put tape on top of those. That's just to kind of hold it in place um, while I'm cutting it out. And so took my, uh, my Ulfa knife or an X-Acto knife I've done uh, this before with and just basically cut the stencil out. And it doesn't take all that long. And as long as you take your time, um, you can get a really nice accurate stencil using this method. Um, but again, about halfway through, my hand was starting to cramp up and I'm just like, why do I not have a Cricut yet? They're really not that expensive. Um, I need to just, uh, just again, bite the bullet and go ahead and get one. But then at the same time, I think to myself, like, I really don't do projects like this all that often. I feel like it's once every few months. Is the cricket just going to sit there and collect dust? So I need you all to convince me in the comments, cricket owners out there, let me know, do I need to just buy one? Is it okay if I just continue to uh, do stencils like this, um, kind of manually cutting them out? Um, this This part right here in particular, where you're going back and uh, cutting out or pe peeling off the stencil that you cut. Um, this is really where it does get uh, pretty tedious um, and can take quite a bit of time. Um, and I was really wishing that I had one. Um, but again, like I just, I don't know if I will use it that often. So I need some convincing. I need you all to let me know uh, and just push me over the edge. I would really appreciate it. So came back through and pulled off uh, all of the um, the negatives here to um, reveal the, the stencil. And so then I took the strips that I cut earlier and measured those out on the, um, on the actual piece to get the frame. I didn't use a tape measure for this. I just did it, um, did it by holding the piece up and then marking it. And so I cut all these pieces over on the miter saw and, um, started to, uh, to attach them, um, to this stocking hanger. I used a little bit of glue and some 18 gauge um, one inch brads to hold it all in place. The frame is one inch thick. And so since the plywood is three quarters inch thick, it's got a little bit of a, of a quarter inch um, kind of reveal uh, or an overhang. I'm not quite sure what the exact term is, but I feel like it gives it a little bit more dimension. Um, and you can see I'm leaving the masking on there. I haven't painted it yet. And the reason for that is because I wanted to paint the whole thing at one time, and you'll see that uh, a little bit later here, but I, I wanted to construct the frame and get it all sanded and, and nice looking and then, um, uh, and then paint the whole thing and peel the masking off from there. And I think that was a good decision. Um, I don't know, maybe, maybe not, but that by cutting the masking flush, uh, the frog tape flush with the plywood, um, once the frame was on, it was able to peel off pretty easily. There were a couple little parts where the uh, spray paint kind of created a seal. And so I just um, cut that and it was uh, it was able to peel off really, really easily. So I went ahead and finished up the frame here. Very simple, basic construction. Again, just glue and brads, nothing too um, fancy. This little chemo brad nailer has been a huge addition to the shop. It's about 200 bucks on Amazon. I'll put a link to the uh, product in the comments below or in the description below. 
Um, and if you're a DIYer like me and not doing a lot of professional grade stuff, um, these chemo tools are a nice, um, uh, a nice, uh, tool brand to have around the shop. The batteries last long. Um, and I've been really happy with them. So I used a little bit of glue and sawdust and, uh, filled in my nail holes. And then once that was dry, I came back with my sander and sanded everything smooth. This got off some of the, um, saw blade marks that I had on the frame from ripping everything down. And so got this all sanded up and prepped for paint. And like I said earlier, I'm using spray paint for this, just a classic old rattle can. This is a Rust-Oleum um, Cranberry. It's a glossy finish. And um, I don't know, it was a few bucks at, at Walmart or something like that. Um, pretty cheap. Uh, but I like the way that it looked. And this is what the color that the customer wanted. Um, and so just went through and did a, a light coat here um, going horizontally and trying to get the frame. Not worried about getting the frame absolutely perfect because I am going to flip it and get the sides uh, here again. But then I went back um, vertically and, and got really good coverage that way. Um, so a couple of coats of the spray paint and flipped it over and then did, uh, did the front as well um, pretty much the same way as I did the back. I could have gotten away with not painting the back, but it was easy enough just to, um, just to paint it and have all of that looking the same. I tried to be pretty light here with the paint, um, especially on the letters and the snowflakes because I didn't want it to bleed too much. This is another area where I'd love your all's feedback. Like, does a vinyl cutter have um, a really good, like, seal? And what I mean by that is, like, you know, the frog tape is known for having a really good seal and so you don't get too many bleed marks. Um, does a vinyl cutter have that same way? I know there is a couple of tricks you can put, like, some clear finish or shellac down first before you paint and that'll kind of seal things up so you don't get any bleed um, but having not ever used a vinyl cutter uh, would be interested to know if that is um, has been a problem for anybody like after you paint over it do you get any bleed or um, or does it do a nice job and give you nice sharp lines so peeled the tape off here uh, again this was a little bit tedious i don't know if uh, i'm sure one big single sheet of vinyl would have been way easier um, but went through and peeled the strips off and this is the last piece which reveals it and was really happy with the way it turned out like I said earlier no bleed uh, and was really happy there so I got these hooks that uh, she wanted five of them my um, customer here for uh, she and her husband and their three kids and so um, got these hooks drilled in and uh, made a little bit of a mistake here because I uh, screwed these in before um, putting the finish on, it turned out to be fine. I just took them off and had nice pre, pre screwed holes that I could come back with later. But, um, I went one step too far. I didn't need to, to screw these all the way in at this step. And this one went over that snowflake. I knew that that was going to happen during the design. I think, um, we actually liked the way that that looked, uh, putting the hook over the snowflake. So that wasn't, um, a mistake. Okay. So here I am taking the hooks off, um, to get it ready for finish. And for the finish, I'm using um, a Halcyon product. Okay, I'll come back to that. So first, I went through with my Forstner bit and uh, put a little bit of a recess in these D-hooks that I'm uh, going to install later. And the reason for that is because the hooks on the wall that this is going to hang on um, stick out from the wall a little bit, so we didn't want it to stick out too far. So there's a little bit of recess. Okay, so this is a Halcyon clear uh, finish. It is made by Total Boat and I love this product. It's a gloss finish. I've been using it on a ton of projects lately um, because it's super easy to apply and clean up. It's water-based, um, but it has these like self-leveling properties to it. So you get this really smooth finish. Um, and so I did that on the back and on the front. You can see here it's bringing out the grain a little bit. Um, I've got that nice burn on the plywood to uh, give it some character. And so um, both the client and I were really happy with the way that this turned out with the finish. And she specifically wanted it to look um, nice and glossy. And so here's these D-rings where this is going to hang on the wall. Um, like I said, there's some hooks that will uh, uh, kind of come out from the wall. So they'll be able to recess there a little bit behind the D-ring and not make the top of this stick out and kind of look awkward because it's going to be hanging um, on the wall. And that's it. So uh, obviously we don't have our stockings up yet. It is only November at the time of making this video. It's before Thanksgiving. And so this is what it will look like. Uh, this is what it looks like in my house on top of the mantle, but in her house, it's going to be hanging on the wall. Uh, and so this is about 42 inches wide and about seven inches tall. And um, 
she has uh, received it and is really happy with it. And I'm looking forward to seeing um, some pictures of it once she's got everything uh, hung up. So anyway, let me all know, uh, or let me know um, everyone in the comments if I should just bite the bullet and get a vinyl cutter. Uh, the next time I make a project like this, I'm sure I will appreciate it. Thank you all so much for watching. Please subscribe, leave a like button. Uh, it really helps my channel out and the YouTube algorithm. I hope you all have a great day.